The Tudor period as we know it was one in England that was marred by much bloodshed. The most famous Tudor king was Henry VIII, who himself is most famous for the fact he had six wives, two of which he ordered their executions, with Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard being beheaded inside the Tower of London. During Henry's reign, 70,000 people were executed and things continued. During Edward VI's reign, his council ordered to rule, as he was just a boy, instigated persecution against Catholics, and following Edward, Mary I struck back, burning many high-profile Protestants at the stake in public in horrifying scenes. When Elizabeth I ruled, things continued with the execution of Scottish anointed monarch, Mary Queen of Scots, and many more high-profile executions continued. However, there were many different methods used during the Tudor period to publicly kill a condemned person. In this video, we look at the different methods, so join us today as we look at five horrifying Tudor execution methods. And remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. But before we begin, the use of public executions during the Tudor period was used almost in a sense as entertainment. There were huge crowds who would turn up to witness the spectacles, which often were incredibly gory. Only those who were high profile enough and members of the aristocracy and royalty were given some privacy for example being executed within the walls of the Tower of London. On with the list. Don't lose your head. The execution method beheading has become one of the most famous of the Tudor period. Many of the most famous courtiers and high profile executions that occurred met their end by being beheaded by an axeman or swordsman. Beheading was seen as a punishment for treason, however often kings such as Henry VIII commuted the sentence of hanging during and quartering to beheading based on the profile of the individual being condemned. For example, Thomas More and Thomas Cromwell were very close to Henry VIII, however fell sharply from grace. They were initially down to be hanged drawn and quartered, which was much more severe, brutal and horrifying. However, Henry in a sense showed some remorse for his former friends. Beheading was seen as a supposedly swift and painless death that should have been over in seconds, However, a botched execution could occur. For executioners performing a beheading, often a condemned person's hair could cause issue and get caught in the axe blade, but in some senses beheading was not swift. The execution of Margaret Pole was incredibly botched, with the Countess of Salisbury allegedly springing from the block and running around the courtyard of the Tower of London, and she was then chased by the executioner with his axe. Allegedly, it took around seven strokes of the axe to take her head off. Also, with beheading, it could be performed in private. Henry VIII's two wives, Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, who were executed, were killed inside the walls of the Tower of London, such was their stature in England. This wasn't entirely in private, as dozens of courtiers were there to witness the event. Anne Boleyn's beheading was performed by a swordsman who travelled from France, and this was seen as an act of clemency from Henry, having her execution performed in a more reliable manner, but the same could not be said for Catherine Howard, who died by the commoner's axe. Famously in London, the public execution site most famous for beheadings was Tower Hill. It was here where many members of court were executed by the axe in front of huge crowds. The scaffold at Tower Hill had been used before and a permanent scaffold was created shortly before the Tudor period began. During Edward VI's reign, the Lord Protector, the man placed in power to rule England during the young king's reign, Edward Seymour himself was executed on Tower Hill. Beheadings continued to be a prominent staple of crime and punishment throughout the other Tudor monarchs' reigns. Elizabeth I, for example, executed one of the most high-profile members in world politics at the time, her cousin Mary Queen of Scots. Inside Fotheringhay Castle, having been found guilty of treason and plotting to kill Elizabeth, she was executed by beheading in an act which upset many across the world. Even after the Tudor period, the act of a public beheading continued across England, and hundreds were killed in this way. One of the more obscure methods of execution used during the Tudor period was death by pressing or crushing. This punishment in particular was used for those people who did not enter a plea at court during a trial. This was a notoriously brutal practice in which a prisoner would lie on the floor of a room and then a board would be placed on top of them. As time went on, weight would be added onto the board, with the individual lying underneath. 
It was intended to act as a method to break a prisoner. However, one horrific case was the death of Margaret Cliveroe. She is referred to as the Pearl of York and was sentenced for refusing to enter a plea in hiding Catholic priests during the reign of Elizabeth I. Margaret risked her life sheltering Catholic priests in her house off the shambles in York and at the time this was a very serious offence in Elizabethan England. She was allegedly pregnant with her fourth child and she was brought to the East Bridge in York. Two sergeants were tasked with executing Clivero, however they instead hired four desperate beggars to do it instead. The board she was crushed by was her own door, and the men who killed her stripped her and tied a handkerchief across her face, and then put a sharp rock under her back. Then an immense amount of weight was added to the board, and the rock underneath snapped her back. She died within 15 minutes and her body was left for hours, before the weight was taken away. Pressing was a rare but savage method of execution, but one utilised during the Tudor period. One of the most savage and horrifying execution methods to have witnessed must have been burning. Burning at the stake was commonly used to carry out the death sentence for those who were accused of heresy. This was done in a way to publicly deter the population from breaking rules and laws on religion. During the Tudor period, burning people at the stake was rather common, as following Henry's break from Rome, the subsequent religious changes this brought also helped to increase the number of heretics. If someone was sentenced to death for heresy, it's most probable that burning would occur. Edward VI was an ardent Protestant who burnt a small number of Catholics, but on the reverse, Mary I, a devout Catholic, burned many Protestants at the stake while she was queen. This helped her to develop her reputation as Bloody Mary. Some high-profile men burned at the stake were Latimer and Ridley, who in the centre of Oxford were burned for their refusal to accept Mary, returning to the Catholic Church. There was even the case of the Guernsey martyrs who were burned at the stake, three women, one of them with child, who were sentenced to death for heresy. Henry VIII also burned people at the stake, including the Protestant martyr Anne Askew. Anne was a young lady who became embroiled in religious turmoil, levelled against Catherine Parr, and her radical preaching was seen as too much, and for this she was horrifically racked and then burned at Smithfield. It was during the reign of Mary I that much of the burning occurred, but it's possible that she took some inspiration from her husband, the then King of Spain, who had personally witnessed and overseen the crimes of the Spanish Inquisition, and in Spain burning was very common for heretics. It would have been horrendous to have witnessed someone burning to death, and sometimes to quicken the ordeal for the condemned, the executioner would tie a small bag of gunpowder around their neck, blowing their heads off and exploding their bodies once the flames got high enough. Another rare but forgotten method of Tudor execution was what Henry VIII imposed onto Richard Roos, a chef who worked in the kitchens of Bishop John Fisher. One evening as Fisher's dining guests consumed their meal, many of them were taken ill. Seventeen members of the dining party became violently sick, and a man and woman died of poisoning. Immediately the chef Richard Roos was arrested, and was taken to the Tower of London for interrogation. Henry VIII himself had an immense fear of being poisoned, and often employed tasters to taste his food, and because of this fear he ordered the 1531 Act for Poisoning. This made death by boiling alive the sentence for anyone caught fatally poisoning others, and Richard Roos got this sentence. At Smithfield in London in 1531, he was boiled to death in a large cauldron, and it lasted around two hours. He was tied up in chains and lowered in and out of the boiling water three times until he was dead. This could have been a nod to the fact he was a cook, however later that year another woman was executed in this manner. It was said that those who witnessed Roos's execution were sick at what they saw, and would rather have seen a beheading such was the horror. One of the most gruesome and disturbing methods of execution used in the Tudor period was hanging, drawing and quartering. To be hanged, drawn and quartered was reserved for the most serious offences, with this being used for treason. It was a process which was often prolonged and savage that shocked many, but still crowds turned out at places such as Tyburn to witness such butchery. Women convicted of treason were either burned or simply hanged, but men suffered the worst fate. The first stage of the ordeal 
would involve an individual being dragged through the streets of their town by a horse. Sometimes the condemned was naked, and they could be dragged on a sledge or without. If not, their head would be constantly banging against the cobbled streets, causing great pain and injury. This was done to publicly shame the defendant, but next came the hanging. A person would be strung up by the gallows hanging by the neck, and they would then be struggling and suffocating but very near to death. They would then be cut down to prolong the suffering. Following this, the worst part would come, the quartering. Whilst still alive, they would be forced to watch their genitals and insides removed, and then burned on a fire next to them. Following this, a coup de gras came, with their head being cut off, with their hands and feet also being cut off, and a meat cleaver being plunged into their corpse, cutting the body into two. The head would then be placed on London Bridge to act as a warning, and the quarters sent to different parts of the country. Famous victims of this was Anthony Babington, the man who instigated the Babington plot, and also Francis Deerham, a man accused of sleeping with Henry VIII's fifth wife, Catherine Howard. So the Tudor period was incredibly brutal and savage, and these execution methods show us what an awful time it really was. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please subscribe, like and share. And once again, thank you so much for watching.